Diablo 4 might be saved, guys. Quote me, write it down, picture it, take the clip from the video or my live stream over on twitch.com backslash warlug. We just finished watching the Diablo 4 uh, developer update today, and we're going to break everything down, at least the important stuff, and just kind of talk about what they changed and how this is just a massive step uh, in the right direction for Diablo in Season 2. Uh, again, they were rock bottom, so the only way that they could go is up. And I think they made some massive improvements. So let's break everything down from the developer stream so that way you guys got it. And then we'll go over the patch notes later. Let's get to it. Okay. So we're gonna kind of we're gonna kind of just skip through this, guys, so that way you can kind of see this. I'm gonna blow this up. We're gonna kind of go over a bunch of the new stuff. So again, the bottom line is these are major, major improvements. A lot of things are very, very, very good. And I think this is a big step in the right direction for the game. Again, I still think it's still gonna be another few seasons before everything is completely fixed. But judging from today, this is a big step in the right direction. So let's just go ahead and skim forward. There is the trailer. If you guys do want to check that out and just see the trailer, I will link all this stuff down in the description below. But the um, the trailer for this for the Season of Blood was just okay, but I'm going to leave that as it is. So let's go ahead and skip forward. They're talking about a lot of stuff here. So uh, the big thing coming is the Season of Blood powers, okay? So you're going to have a an entire chart here or grid whatever you want to call it and you're going to have vampiric powers so the whole brand new vampiric theme we kind of knew about this but we got a really good insight of how they work so you're going to have five different powers that you can put onto your gear pieces which you see here um which you can kind of see like with the gear power here and these little symbols that are added on based on the core correlating powers okay so you're going to be able to put these on your gear it's going to allow you to kind of store these vampiric powers on there. And then there's going to be a big, huge cost or activation cost, which is what you guys saw there. Um, right here, there's an activation cost, which these are the symbols that you're putting on your gear to enable you to use these powers. Okay. You're going to be able to find this stuff just from gear pieces dropping, um, killing monsters, or doing the brand new seasonal content um, in the game, which is kind of like a hell tide. But you guys can see here there's three different vampiric powers they each level up from one to three and you can level them up with the activation cost that you guys see here that is put onto your gear pieces so you're going to have these on your gear pieces you're going to be able to level these up to level three and there's going to be an activation cost within each power that you're going to use there is 22 powers in total and some of these are actually pretty good like the, the guaranteed overpower, the increased overpower damage. When you evade, you become unstoppable for three seconds, which is very good. Like there's a lot of good stuff. And there's even like a really nice showcase of the powers here. Uh, as they're progressing through the season. Where you can see these and you're just using them. You got the zombies that are going to like flow out and do a bunch of damage. You can summon a bat as a vampiric power to kind of stun your enemies. And then this is probably the most popular one where you turn into a bat and you get to dash and cover a wide range of area on the game. But this is going to be really cool powers. It's basically swapping out malignant powers for vampirics. But I do think we are in a very good spot for the um, powers going into season two. So uh, with the powers, though, you're going to have a bunch of them. We're going to skip forward. Um, you can only put them on armored gear pieces. So there's no weapons no jewelry you can't put them on there you can only put them on gear pieces which i think is really really cool um when you're going through these it's a really cool way again you're going to see here down in the consumables tab again you got different levels that you can level these up um however i will say that there's still a major inventory issue that even though we're getting rid of gems now we're going to put more consumables in here just like we did with malignant hearts which is kind of a, a thing at least it's not in your main inventory spot it's in consumables but still it's still an inventory problem so hopefully we get this stuff figured out in multiple seasons down the road um next you got the different monster types and you get guys can kind of see those but that's basically the sum up of the new um seasonal content however i do want to find where it's at here so you're going to see that the seasonal content is highlighted in this greenish 
dark green blue these work kind of similar to hell tides the biggest difference here is that these are going to be available at level one so you don't have to reach a certain world tier to unlock this or do this seasonal content and these will be up 100 percent of the time there's never going to be a, a, a time where the new vampiric seasonal content will not be available and yes these do go in in correlation or coincide with hell tide so both of them can be active at the same time so uh that kind of sums up that you're going to be going into these zones and killing monsters to get the petrified blood which you use to power and get your stuff for your vampiric powers which i think is really cool so we'll have to see how that all pans out but that's not the most important stuff we're going to skip for we got a lot of stuff to cover and we're only going to cover the main things i want to go over end game because this is the biggest issue with the game or one of the biggest issues with the game so big shout out to joe papawa for this beautifully constructed um grid here this tree to kind of show you the overall progression of the game we've always had a big issue with the progression of the game and feeling more powerful as well as just having end game content that you need to do so this kind of highlights your progression as a player moving through the different zones but now with the brand new season, we're getting five bosses, which you can see here, the Echo of Varshan, the Beast in Ice, Daryl, Grigor, and then Lord Zur. So the way it's described in the dev stream is you're going to have to do activities to get items to be able to go fight the bosses. So as an example, you have to complete Tree of Whispers to get the item drop to go fight the Echoes of Varshan, which incidentally will not only drop you better gear but you'll get more experience and then down here in world tier four you'll get items to go fight Daryl, which is a level 100 boss not as strong as echo of lilith but very strong so this new end game progression is very very good so again you're going to see doing hell tides will be able to get you items to fight grigor doing nightmare dungeons between levels 21 to 100 will get you items to fight the the beast of whispers or the beast in ice whispers for echo of varshan and then getting echoes drop as well as grigor's drop will allow you to fight Daryl, and then doing legion events as well as the world boss will get you items to fight zur now Daryl being the level 100 boss this is the boss that you want to fight with the increased very small increase to get the uber uniques so Daryl is going to be your main boss that you're going to want to fight to if you really want to try to farm uber uniques so this overall concept of having an end game mechanic like the tree of whispers to get an item piece that you can go fight a new boss that gives you much better gear drops as well as more xp as well as um your certain ancestral items like the tempest roar or the um remnants of the infinite for the sorcerer these kind of items drop from these bosses and having an end game mechanic that you can go farm these items to fight these bosses is a very big step okay the next part about all of this which i think is really really cool is that now we have more things to do as opposed to just doing nightmare dungeons in general okay so now we don't just have to do nightmare dungeons and tree of whispers hell ties become irrelevant legion events are irrelevant and world bosses are, re are irrelevant as they are now now we have a way but the most important thing about all of this is that the items that drop to fight these bosses are tradable so for example if i'm farming tree of whispers for me and my community my clan to fight echoes while other people are farming hell tides we can trade these items to each other so we can go fight the corresponding bosses or go fight Daryl. So the, this is a very good thing. This kind of uh, rivals or kind of pulls away from like POE and things like that, which I think is very, very good for the game. Okay. So this grid is amazing. That's how the new end game system is going to work. Now, uh, it's not highlighted here. Each boss, they only showed three here, but these three bosses. Okay. You got your three bosses here, which I think are really, really cool. Um, and they didn't show all five, but here's three of them. So those are really cool looking. Um, the next thing is that each boss is not only going to drop all those things that I mentioned before, but there's exclusive cosmetics that drop when you're fighting the bosses too, which I think is just a little extra. I think that's cool. Um, the next big thing about all of this is that the Tree of Whispers 
the Legion events, the Hell Ties, and all of these things got massive buffs. So we're going to go over those next because those are the most important things. So I'm going to kind of fill up this general information here and just kind of talk about each one um, as a whole so you guys can kind of just see this. So hardcore players, before we had a lot of issues when you disconnect while in combat, you die, you don't get safe. Now the scroll of escape, of escape will teleport you and you're safe. Incenses, huge. Grant EXP and they persist after you die so you get to keep it for the duration. Now this right here, the EXP is the biggest part of this. EXP bonuses are now multiplicative instead of additive and they they go in on top of your world tier bonuses. So if you watch the dev stream or just in here, it is a 40% increase in EXP because they stated that they wanted more people to be able to get to 100 because not enough players were able to get that power creep and reach those kind of goals. So a 40% increase in EXP across the board, fantastic, huge, huge a step in the right direction. Now in the new season, we'll have two uh, waypoints unlocked in each zone. Uh, that's a little quality of life, which is really good. Renown persists through every season. So we've already done it once. You will not have to do it again. Huge dub there. Overworld monsters in world tiers three and four no longer trail players after certain levels. So when you're running through the open world, the monsters will not follow you once you hit these level caps. Very, very cool. Um, so the EXP is the biggest one here and on top of incenses. So you can have the 5% from your pot. I'm assuming maybe 5% from the incenses or 10. And then you have the world tier bonuses stacked on top of that. Then the party bonuses stacked on top of that. So the increase EXP bonus is huge for the game. We needed a huge power creep. We wanna feel powerful. This is a big step in that direction. So now town and vendors, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, the town and vendors, this is more quality of life stuff. Occultus has been set up at Tree of Whispers. Stashes are added to everything with waypoints. Additional stashes have been added for just so you don't have to run as far to get to certain things. And then the Curiosities vendor where you turn in your ovals to gamble has been set up, set up closer. So here's an example on a map. You guys can kind of see here where you got the stash, the ovals, and then there is another one for the city, which you guys can see here. There are stashes literally everywhere that you guys can see stashes in every little thing. And then the oval guy is here now, as opposed to being way down here. So now you don't have to run as far as far as the do your ovals turn in, run to your stash, etc. Huge quality of life improvement. Love that big dub. Now, next is the mount stuff, which my community loves to troll me at. So the mounts got a huge improvement. They just sucked overall. I don't care what anybody says. The responsiveness sucked. Now we won't, we'll have less likely chances of getting stuck or slow down unexpectedly. The uh, mount now jumps over these barricades here. So when you're going through it, you now will break these barricades and jump through them. Huge. Base movement of the mount is increased by 14%. The top speed remains unchanged. And then the speed boost duration is increased by 50%. So you will stay at the top speed longer and your base speed is increased. So now when you're doing open world activities, you now get to just blast through all of it and get around a lot faster, huge dub. Now, they did mention talking in here that on keyboard and mouse, you had to move your mouse to the edge of the screen like you see me here to get the maximum speed. That has been changed, so now you don't have to do that. So the responsiveness to that is much better. For controller players, nothing changed. The cooldowns on your mount, manual dismount, force dismount, and then well, getting dismounted by combat has been significantly reduced. So when you manually dismount five seconds, if you get hit too many times and you get knocked off, instead of waiting 30, you wait 15. And then when you dismount in combat where you use the skill when you jump off, it's been reduced from 10 seconds to three, all big improvements in the open world when you're running around. Nothing is more worse than getting knocked off the horse trying to get to, to a location or an event and you have to wait 30 seconds to get back on it. Nothing worse. So big dub here. <clears throat> Next and probably the most anticipated um, part of this or one of the things is all about nightmare dungeons. Okay, these things got a huge, huge change, not necessarily buff, but a big change. The biggest one is now teleporting to a nightmare dungeon now takes the player inside instead of the double load screens outside big big dub we have wanted this since forever events in the dungeon um, monster density has been increased which is huge 
and then the NPCs no longer get one shot in the later tiers. As an example, like if you remember the prisoner one where you have three different prisoners tied up and you have to protect them, they don't die as fast. So this is really good. Traps, the, uh, the readability has been improved. And then crowd control against us as players has been greatly reduced. Greatly reduced. This is a big dub. Okay, big, big dub. All right. Now we don't have to worry about that. Nightmare Dungeons again. So they changed a lot of the affixes. Pikachu being shocked while in the bubble is going to give you a bonus movement speed to get back because you had to trail back. But now Pikachu won't start until players are in combat and Pikachu will only start when players have a direct path to the bubble. So this is going to be a change. I still don't think people are going to play Lightning Storm or Pikachu, but this is an interesting change because we want to speed through Nightmare Dungeons. Drifting Shade, getting the persistent duration reduced, and then the respawn time also increased, so it takes longer for it to respawn. So now we're not running around spending a majority of the time just trying to dodge this. We can actually get through the dungeon. Very big dub. Um, the other ones that they changed is Backstabber. So now if you get attacked from behind, you become vulnerable, and then while you're vulnerable, you take an increased amount of damage. So this is a big change, so now it doesn't necessarily is that bad, but I still probably would roll off this, but it's still not as bad. Monster crit resist. So now it's been reduced and then it, it scales based on the level of your nightmare dungeon. Uh, I still don't like this one. And then death pulse, probably one of the worst ones in the game. Uh, prevent death pulses on monsters that have death explosions. So monsters that already explodes as part of their normal mechanic when you kill them, the death pulse was stacked on top of that. So you have two explosions to dodge. That no longer happens. And then pulses from spawning on top of each other. So there won't be multiple ones that you can't get rid of and having them explode multiple times on top of you. Big dub here. Okay. Dungeon changes again to the efficiency of doing your nightmare dungeons. So now there is a more direct path when you're trying to do these and then you run up and complete. Same thing here. You come in, defeat all these, come back and fight the, the boss and you can get out. Now, if you really wanted to maximize like EXP, for an example, you can come here and do the rest of the dungeon, but they did change it. I really like this because there's nothing worse than backtracking in these dungeons when you're trying to be efficient. So big dub here. Next, world events. The time between Legion events has been reduced by five minutes. The warning time has been increased and they fixed an issue where it wouldn't pin. So there's more Legion events and more world bosses. So now they spawn every three and a half hours instead of every six. We get a notification 60 minutes and then we get another message broadcast 15 minutes before it spawns. This is huge, mainly big change because not enough people got to experience the world bosses because of real life stuff, whether your job or whatever it is, school, etc. But now that we need to do both of these events to fight the big seasonal boss, it makes sense that we're going to be having more opportunities to do these during you know a day-to-day -day basis so big dub here um end game activities <clears throat> uh end game activities so nightmare sigils when you turn in a whisper cache will now be within five levels of the highest one you completed so if you completed a level 30 you're gonna get it within five levels i'm assuming either way gold reward so turning in a whisper cache gives us a lot more gold or greatly more gold this is good because we need gold to re-roll our um, affixes on our gear or enchanting them, which has been changed, guys. The enchanting cost has been significantly reduced, so it only goes up by a little amount each time. But you will have one initial big cost, and that is the first one that you do, and then it slowly goes up from there. So I think that's a big dub, but we will test and see how uh, effective that actually is. Experience from Whispers and Hell Ties has been increased substantially. What this means is that the experience you get from turning in a Tree of Whispers or opening up a chest in the Hell Tide has been significantly increased, which is very good for the game. Whisper Caches adhere to the item slot. So if you guys remember when you turn in your Tree of Whispers, hey, I need the helmet because I want an opportunity to try to get Tempest Roar. But wait, I got a ring. So now when you do pick a particular gear slot like a helmet you will get a helmet no matter what so that change has been fixed helltide chests now have specific icons on the map to indicate their type so as opposed to it being like just jewelry now you'll see one that says ring you'll see one that says amulet gloves etc it'll be that instead of just like a defensive gear piece or just 
in overall just, hey, these are armor pieces and you gotta go to each one to find out which one the helmet is. No longer have to do that, big dub. All right, big U, UI fixes, all right? Items can now be marked as favorite or junk and you can figure out how do you wanna sell them. Extracted aspects or aspects with the same legendary power will now be grouped together. So that way you don't have to worry about trying to sort them. This is big. Sorting uh, of normal affixes has been fixed. So you guys can see this. And then there's a dungeon map tool. So you, as you guys can see here, when you type in, it'll highlight, which is really awesome. Down here on the bottom, you're going to have the different filters that you can pick from, whether it's weapons, armor, jewelry, and you can even sort by rarity as well as sacred only or ancestral only, which you see here, which I think is very good for the game. Again, no update on more inventory space. So we still only have the five stash tabs, which is kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. All right. Okay, items. We already knew about the gems. You will get the gem shard and then you can make gems. So that hasn't changed. I just talked to you about the enchantment costs that have been updated. So they've been reduced. Now here is the big one. And this is a good and bad one, which we'll probably have to talk about for just a minute. I don't want the video to go too long, but this is very important. Crafting materials will drop in place of lower item power, normal magic and rare in equipments world tier three and four. So what this means is if you go back and watch that if you're in world tier four, only ancestral items are gonna drop. So if a normal magic or rare item would drop, in place, you're gonna get crafting materials that you're automatically gonna pick up, or not automatically pick up, but they will automatically drop. And the same thing in World Tiers 3. So World Tier 3, you'll get sacred gear. And if you were to get a magic rare or normal, you're gonna get crafting materials in that place. Now, my chat highlighted to this, and this is a really good topic because it's good and bad. It's good for the efficiency of trying to power your character, which they talk about. So you're looking for ancestral gear pieces to power level your character or get better gear, which is very important. Uh, on the And it's more efficient when you're running through dungeons. On the back end, now you're not having to filter through a lot of things. You don't have to sell as much. If you are gonna sell, you're selling all ancestral or all sacred. Um, and then the big negative that we kind of thought about this on the first you know, reaction to this is getting gear to power your characters or your alt characters. But again, you're going to want the best stuff anyway, which wouldn't come from normal magic or rare. So <clears throat> that's a big change. Now, another huge change to all this is the amount of gear that you're going to get and the item power that's coming with it. So higher level monsters in world tiers three and four drop sacred and ancestral items of item power up to the potential of 920. So now it's 920 instead of 820. And when you turn in in normal whispers or hell tide caches, you can get a plus 10 item power. So let's say in world tier three, <clears throat> your item power limit is 500. Now you can get it up to 510 as just a base example. That's not the exact numbers, but just as so you get an idea, which is huge. Now 920 is the max. And when you go up to item or nightmare dungeons level 180, 90, etc that item level increases by one every two levels that you're increasing. So, and then what that does is it's going to increase your uh, gear pieces, attack power and base power, like the base attack power, as well as the item power. They did not highlight that this is going to increase the affix stats on the gear piece. So for example, if you were going to have increased critical strike chance of whatever number, that's not going to change but the base numbers will increase with the higher level that you're doing. So this again is gonna be very good for trying to farm your higher level nightmare dungeons. It makes it worth it. Because really there's no achievement from doing a level 50 as opposed to a level 100. There's no difference because all the gear is the same. Now you can get the higher gear um, item level power, which will make you stronger by farming the higher levels. So I think that's a huge change and will allow you to push. So again, I think it's a big, a big dub here. All right, let me see. I don't think there's anything else. Okay. And yeah, guys, that is going to sum up the video. I'm going to try to cut it down so it's not as long. I know we went over a lot of information. Uh, I will leave a link to the 
developer stream down in the chat or down in the description of the video make sure to like comment down what are your guys thoughts about this is this a big dub for blizzard in diablo 4 in season 2 or is this a l you guys let me know please get the conversation going don't forget to subscribe and as always stay gaming and i'll see you guys in the next one